This is a pre-lecture video on the balance of payments for the course Global Business Economics. I'm David Frankel, a professor at Melbourne Business School. Let's begin. As we learned in a prior pre-lecture video, a country's GDP measures its domestic output. Thus, GDP captures what's going on inside the country. The balance of payments, in contrast, is outward looking. It captures a country's transactions with the rest of the world. The balance of payments has a number of building blocks. The first is net exports, abbreviated NX. NX simply equals a country's exports X minus its imports M. Importantly, NX includes only goods and services. Examples include mobile phones, iron ore, and legal services. NX excludes assets, which may be physical assets, such as factories, or financial assets, such as stocks and bonds. These are counted in a later building block called net financial assets. To see how NX is computed, suppose Australia sells X equals $100 worth of coal to China and buys M equals $75 worth of wine from France. NX then equals 25, Australia's exports of 100 minus its imports of 75. We now turn to the second building block, a country's income balance, or IB for short. IB equals Australia's income from overseas assets, less foreigners' income from assets in Australia. This is where interest payments are counted, since a loan is considered to be an asset from the lender's point of view. For instance, suppose that Australian households receive $40 in dividends on foreign stocks that they own. Suppose that they also pay $100 in interest on loans to foreign banks. Then the income balance IB equals 40 minus 100, which is just minus 60. Combining the first two building blocks, the current account CA is simply the sum of NX and IB. Thus, CA can be thought of as a country's net income from exports of goods and services and from foreign assets. For instance, suppose, as in the prior examples, that NX is 25 while IB is minus 60. Then the current account CA is 25 minus 60, which is just minus 35. In this case, there is a trade surplus because NX is positive, but there is a current account deficit since CA is negative. We now turn to the third building block of the balance of payments. It is net foreign assets, abbreviated NFA. NFA is defined as the foreign assets of Australians minus the Australian assets of foreigners. Not all assets are counted in NFA. Currency, by which we mean coins and bills, is excluded, as well as any assets held by central banks. For instance, suppose Australians have $1,000 invested in foreign assets, such as stocks, bonds, and factories. Foreigners, in turn, have $800 invested in Australian assets. Then NFA equals 1,000 minus 800, or $200. In fact, the balance of payments uses not the stock, NFA, of net foreign assets, but rather its change, delta NFA. For instance, suppose a German household borrows 100 Australian dollars from the Australian bank NAB. It uses 75 of those dollars to buy a share of the Australian bank ANZ from an Australian household and spends the remaining $25 on Australian wine. Then the change of NFA, denoted delta NFA, is simply 25. The increase of $100 in Australian-owned foreign assets, the loan to the German household, minus the increase of $75 in foreign-owned Australian assets, the share of ANZ. Delta NFA can be usefully interpreted as net imports of foreign assets, the acquisition of foreign assets by Australians, less the acquisition of Australian assets by foreigners. However, these assets may not be literally imported. The ownership changes, but the physical location may not. This is most obviously true when the assets are real assets, such as factories. We now turn to the fourth building block of the balance of payments. Recall that NFA excludes the foreign assets of central banks. These are called the central bank's foreign reserves. These assets are counted in net foreign reserves, abbreviated RES. It is defined as the RBA's foreign reserves 
minus the Australian denominated foreign reserves of foreign central banks. For example, suppose the RBA holds foreign currency worth a thousand Australian dollars. Suppose, moreover, that foreign central banks hold Australian government bonds that are worth 200 Australian dollars. Then RES is just 1,000 minus 200, which is 800. In this sense, RES is analogous to NFA. It is simply the net foreign asset of the RBA vis-a-vis -vis foreign central banks. As in the case of NFA, the balance of payments uses not the stock, RES, of net foreign reserves, but rather its change, delta RES. For instance, suppose a German household trades euros to the European Central Bank for 100 Australian dollars, which it uses to buy a share of NAB. NAB then trades two Australian dollars to the RBA for euros, which it pays to the German household as a dividend. As a result of these transactions, the RBA's foreign reserves have fallen by $2, while the European Central Bank's Australian-denominated foreign reserves have fallen by $100. Thus, delta RES equals minus 2 minus minus 100, which is simply 98. Intuitively, the European Central Bank's Australian dollar-denominated foreign reserves fell by $98 more than the RBA's foreign reserves sell, so Australia's net foreign reserves, RES, rose by $98. In this sense, delta RES is analogous to delta NFA. Just as delta NFA denotes net imports of foreign assets, delta RES denotes net imports of foreign reserves. Combining the third and fourth building blocks, we obtain the capital and financial account, which is denoted KA. It is defined as the sum of minus delta NFA and minus delta RES. What does KA represent? Recall that delta NFA is a country's net imports of foreign assets. Thus, minus delta NFA can be thought of as its net exports of foreign assets. Likewise, delta RES is a country's net imports of foreign reserves. So minus delta RES equals its net exports of foreign reserves. Accordingly, KA can be thought of as net exports of foreign assets and foreign reserves. In this sense, KA is the analog for the case of assets of NX, a country's net exports of goods and services. We now turn to the balance of payments itself. Abbreviated BOP, it equals the sum of CA, KA, and a third term SD. SD stands for statistical discrepancy. It equals minus CA plus minus KA. Accordingly, its presence in the formula ensures that the balance of payments, BOP, is always equal to zero. SD is affected by two factors. The first is mismeasurement of other categories of the balance of payments. For instance, if government statisticians overestimate CA or KA by $1, this is offset by a $1 decrease in SD. Perhaps less obviously, SD is also affected by changes in net foreign currency holdings by households and by organizations other than central banks. For instance, suppose either the Australian dollar holdings of foreigners rise by a dollar or the foreign currency holdings of Australians fall by a dollar. This causes SD to rise by one dollar. This phenomenon will be illustrated in the third case of an extended example that we will explore shortly. We can use a tree structure to summarize the relationships that we have learned. The balance of payments BOP equals a sum of CA, KA, and SD, a sum that always equals zero. CA, in turn, equals the sum of NX and IB. KA equals the sum of minus delta NFA and minus delta RES. Finally, SD equals the sum of minus CA and minus KA. We now turn to an extended example. Throughout this example, we will assume that an Australian household spends 100 Australian dollars on a toy from China. This transaction lowers NX by $100 as shown. We will study three cases which differ in terms of what the firm does with the $100. In case one, the firm uses the $100 to buy a share of ANZ from an Australian household. This share pays no dividends in the current year, 
so the effect on the income balance, IB, is zero. The effect on CA is thus minus 100, the sum of the effects on NX and on IB. Since Australians' holdings of foreign assets have not changed, but foreigners' holdings of Australian assets have risen by 100, the change delta NFA in Australia's net foreign assets is minus 100. As no central banks are involved in any of these transactions, the change delta RES in Australia's net foreign reserves is zero. The transactions thus raise the capital and financial account KA by $100 the sum of minus delta NFA and minus delta RES. Intuitively, the transfer of the share of ANZ is an export of an asset from Australia. In the balance of payments, exports appear as positive numbers. Since CA equals minus KA, the statistical discrepancy SD is zero. Finally, BOP, the sum of CA, KA, and SD is zero. This will always be the case since SD equals minus CA plus minus KA. In case two, rather than buying a share of ANZ, the Chinese firm trades $100 to the Bank of China for renminbi. As shown, this change has no effect on NX, IB, or CA. However, as the Chinese firm no longer acquires a share of ANZ, delta NFA is now zero. And as the Bank of China adds 100 Australian dollars to its foreign reserves, Australia's net foreign reserves, RES, now fall by $100. Since the increase in delta NFA vis-a-vis -vis case 1 is exactly offset by the fall in delta RES, KA is unchanged at $100. Since, moreover, CA is unchanged, SD is still zero as in case 1, and BOP is also zero. We now turn to case three. In this case, the owners of the Chinese firm instead keep the 100 Australian dollars for a future trip to Sydney. NX, IB, CA, and Delta NFA are the same as in case two. However, since the Bank of China no longer acquires 100 Australian dollars, Delta RES is now zero. Adding minus Delta NFA of zero, to minus delta RES of zero, we find that KA is now zero. Unlike in cases one and two, the transactions in case three do not affect KA. If we add minus CA to minus KA, we now find that SD is 100. This also differs from cases one and two, where SD was zero. Finally, adding CA, KA, and SD, we find that BOP is again zero. Intuitively, the events of case three involve the export of 100 Australian dollars to a firm in China. Since private foreign currency holdings do not appear elsewhere in the balance of payments, they can only affect the statistical discrepancy SD. In particular, SD is raised by any net currency exports to households or to organizations other than central banks. This concludes the GBE pre-lecture video on the balance of payments. Thank you for watching.